worst ending ever. But Ultimate Warrior is in the Hall of Fame, so yay! As well as Kofi Kingston winning over Randy Orton. Guys, this is probably one of the most mediocre, the most ridiculous, bland Raws I've ever seen in my life that still absolutely, positively is not germane at all to the Royal Rumble. And they did a good job somewhat in promoting their WWE Network, which I am planning on getting since it practically gives you all the pay-per-views for $10, which is pretty darn good. But besides all that, there's only one match and one match alone that brought a smile to my face and made me so ridiculously happy. And I could care less about the match, the tag team match between uh, the, the Rose Brothers and the forgettable one and that other guy, the, the meat eater right back. Like, I can care about them. I can care about the other. I, even, I couldn't even care about the Divas match. Didn't even care. I only cared about one match tonight. And yeah, maybe that is a little bit biased for a reviewer like me, but for real, I'm going to be honest. This match was awesome, and it was epic in epic proportions. And I'm saying this because everybody in the YWC knows what went down between these two people. And I'm talking about Kofi Kingston and Randall Keith Orton. We know that they had a really great feud many years back, and somehow... Randall Keith Orton got a little bit too heated, got got him in some trouble behind stage, and I stuck at mid-card. Maybe they did bury the hatchet? I have no idea, because let's face it, we all know that Randall Keith Orton would never allow anybody to pin him cleanly. He has that much pride. So, I, so somehow, they must have buried the hatchet or something behind stage. I have no idea. But the fact that after many years of this, Kofi Kingston, for many years of being a punching bag of WWE, he finally, finally beat Randy Orton clean on Raw. I'm sorry. I don't mark. That was my mark out moment. Like, seriously, straight up. My mark out moment. And I, I don't mark out. But that was a that was awful for me. Because it was like it was the most, it was pretty much the best come up in story that I have ever seen this year, seriously. Because Kofi Kingston really deserved to have a title. He has he deserves to have a title shot for crying out loud. It's been so many years he's been stuck at having the mid card belt or a tag team belt. And I really hope and I'm doubting it, but I'm gonna say this. I'm actually gonna say this and be positive about this. I really do feel that maybe they might look at Kofi Kingston down the line to have a title shot. I'm going to be positive about this. I mean, realistically, no. He doesn't have a shot in the dark. But then let's be positive about it. I really do feel that maybe they might be looking into it. The fact that they allow Randy to be pinned, who knows? But I'm hoping that, that they'll change their mind about him. But then, I really didn't care much for the beginning. I didn't care for the middle. I didn't care for any of the segments. But there was an interesting... Actually, I take that back. Even though they had a rematch somewhat between the uh, between the um, the New Age Outlaws, CM Punk, and The Shield, I will say this. Why? Why in the world would you even think of turning these guys heel when they're retirees. Why on God's green earth would you ever decide to turn these guys heel when they are not in any way, shape, or form on the roster? Makes no sense whatsoever. Seriously, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to turn these guys heel and to make these guys Go against CM Punk when they're only there for like three nights. Makes absolutely no sense to me. And in the end, I guess it's supposed to be kind of like fodder for the the feud between Roman Reigns and CM Punk. 
I'm not even going to say the Shield because let's face it, those two, they're going to be like pushed aside. It's all about Roman Reigns. So honestly, yeah, sure, they need to have some kind of fuel to start this ridiculous feud. But I will say this, the feud should be interesting. I'm not going to completely hate on it. And it's going to really give CM Punk a challenge, so I'll give it a shot. But one of the worst endings that I've ever seen in a very long time. Actually, no, there have been a lot of bad endings in 2013. But you know what? It's 2014, so let's start out the year right with probably one of the most ridiculous worst endings of all time. Daniel Bryan and the Wyatts. A storyline that they could have made well. They could have done well, and they could have extended it all the way down to WrestleMania if they really wanted to. But they blew it in epic proportions. They tried to pull a CM Punk with Daniel Bryan, knowing that his character sucks at being an anti-hero. He sucks at espionage. He sucks, period. You know, well, not period. I love DB. I love Daniel Bryan. But when they're trying to reinvent his character, yeah, they make him suck a little bit. He sucks as a heel because instead of him being crafty, instead of him being manipulative, instead of him being like a mind player, he was downright abusive. Like, he really could not be a heel without being abusive. And that, if you only have that angle with being a heel, you really don't have that far to go. The only route that he can possibly go and go well is being a face. He's a character that has, he's a character that has a lot of pride. He's a character that has a lot of strength. He's a character that will literally go for it and just, it, because it's something that he wants to do. Like, he'll put a lot of heart into what he does. That's what makes him a great face. But what do they do? They try to break him and put him in the Wyatts, even though he wasn't broken. And why break the Wyatts up? The Wyatts are probably one of the most hottest, psychotic heel factions that the WWE has ever had in this ridiculous PG era. And you're going to have somebody infiltrate the ra the, the ranks to break them up? Why? They're psychotic heels. You can't break up someone who's crazy. That's, that's ridiculous. It's stupid. And you, uh, it was just a dumb idea to begin with to try to have him join the ranks because he was broken. Instead of making them brainwashed, what they would have that they should have done a long time ago. They should have made him brainwashed. When they dragged him out the ring on the shoulders of whoever was carrying him, they should have did something to him backstage, made him brainwash him, put Brie Bella in it since their relationships is on the blast anyway, or on blast. But regardless, since Brie Bella is highly involved with them being married or about to get married or whatever, she should have been involved. And it's like, there's something different about you, Daniel. I don't know what it is. But... It's just, it's not, not you. And he's just like, I'm fine, or something ridiculous like that. It would have been cool if they actually extended it all the way to that. But no. They had to break him, and then they had to have him infiltrate the ranks, and then they still had him talk, and then they still had him have, act like DB, and then somehow, it's like, I got you, Daniel Bryan, and he, he unzipped his, his trash man suit, and then he just like, I got you. What? What? That's a... <sighs> Look, that was probably one of the dumbest endings I've ever seen in my life. Well, one of them. There were really many, a lot of dumb endings from Raw, but that was one of them. Good grief. Seriously? <sighs> anyway, guys, there was only one possibly... Two matches that were interesting, but one match that really did make me happy, and that was Kofi Kingston. Everything else was one big ball of suck. But I want to hear how y'all feel about it. Leave a comment in the comment section below us in a video response on how you feel about Raw tonight. Peace out. I'm going to sleep. Later.